Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. Does this look familiar? Seems like every spring and early summer, the rain falls every time I want to get outside and start planting something or try to get something done in the garden. However, by the end of the summer and early fall, I'm praying for rain because it seems so dry. The grass is crunching underneath my feet. I'm watering the garden constantly and worrying if it's going to make it. Rain barrels seem to be the obvious solution to this problem. So by storing the rainwater in the early season, that way you can better manage those sporadic rain showers later on in the season. However, it only takes one look online at rain barrel costs, and that'll get you rethinking that plan. They can range anywhere from $80 to $120 for the plain ones, and well over $200 for the fancy ones. So about a year and a half ago, we decided to build our own DIY rain catchment system. And we're going to show you a little bit about how we did that today so you can build your own. Now's a great time to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos as they come out. You could do it right there. All right. So I wanted to go into this. We're going to take you step by step today. And then I'm going to actually show you a build. Uh, we actually have two barrels here set up. And they're trash cans. You can see that we have it from a previous build. We're adding a third one today. So I'm going to show you kind of how we did it originally. And then we're going to add the third one to it. So I'm going to take you through some of the features of our system and how we set it up today. Then I'm going to take you through installing that third barrel step by step. And I'm going to have all of the items linked in the description below. That way you can follow the recipe, so to speak, to a T. If you want to follow it verbatim, great. If you want to deviate a little bit. Now, one of the first things that I'm going to suggest to you is to use one of these quarter turn spigots. If you notice here, that's how fast you can turn the water on and off. I highly recommend them because some of the ones you're going to find online or in the big box stores actually have the knobs and you're going to turn for a little while to get the water turned on and off and you're wasting water during that time to get it to a full stream. This next piece is actually a universal hose diverter kit. It diverts water out of the downspout and into your trash can in this case or into a rain barrel if you use a standard rain barrel. You can see here you can add this diverter to any rain barrel. It comes with the hole saws. It's actually a really good kit. I highly recommend this. If you want to get this, there's a link in the description for all this stuff. And if you do buy it from our link, we do get a small commission. It helps keep the channel going. So we just ask that you consider buying it through our link. Now, the reason I like this diverter kit so much is because it has this cup that sits inside the downspout. And as the rain comes down the downspout, it actually collects on the outside and flows down the hose into your rain barrel. Now, the way that this should be set up is that your water should run down into the barrel, but the barrel itself, so that the top of it right here should actually be slightly higher than where that outlet is coming off of the downspout. So it will run down into the barrel, but the top of it, you see this gap here, it should be flat, right? So it's running just slightly downhill into the barrel, but the top of the barrel itself is above the outlet. Now what happened here is we actually had this set up on a platform. It has settled into the ground over time. So we actually had this set up correctly originally, but because we didn't pack it down and we didn't put concrete blocks underneath it, the small uh, inch or two concrete blocks, this is settled and we're gonna have to fix it now. So I'm gonna share a couple of reasons why I think trash cans actually are better to use than some of the other alternatives. The first reason is because they're opaque. So there's no sun getting through these. They're solid, uh, no light gets in. So there's no algae growing inside. Additionally, the tops come off. So there's some barrels like this that you can get at Tractor Supply or online. I don't like these because they're small tops and you can't get inside to clean them. You can't get inside to, if there's trash that collects, it's very difficult to get into. And so this, you can just lift the top off and it's easy. This is the project we're going to work on today. We're going to reconnect another barrel. We're going to take these tops off right here and I'm going to show you. If you look inside, even though this water's been collecting for a while, you can see some trash at the bottom. This is just what comes out of the, the gutters, you know, from leaves and that kind of stuff. Maybe uh, some of the shingle pieces that are coming out into 
uh, the gutter that, that you'll see emptying out into your yard and stuff. But that's all that's in there. There's no algae. Now, this is where the diverter hose actually empties into the barrel. You can see here, if this was set up properly, it would be at just a slight angle and it would allow a couple of inches at the top so it doesn't overflow. Uh, but that's one of the things we're gonna work on here in the near future. Now, I think it's a great time to point out that we connected all of our barrels at the bottom. Now, you can connect them at the top, but if you do, you have to wait for one to fill up before the water gets into the next one, and you'll have to put a spigot on each one. And you can see that as we go across here, this is the next barrel. It's just as full as the first. So the great thing about when you connect the barrels at the bottom, they fill at the same rate from the bottom up, and so they're always equal in the amount of water that you have in them. The other thing is that the, you can use the collected weight of all the barrels that you have for your gravity-fed system. Now, again, you can see some sediment at the bottom of this barrel, but that's one of the things I like about the trash cans is it gives you the ability to drain them out, clean them out and, and periodically as needed. Now, today we're gonna add this third, and you can see we had a trash can there before. We're gonna add a third trash can in and fix a mistake that I made with the other ones. I got the first one right originally. I've actually replaced the second one because I didn't get it right and I, get, I didn't get the third one right. So I made a key mistake in how I did the connections. And if I had just used the correct hole saw, it would have made all the difference in the world and I wouldn't be redoing it now. What we're gonna to use to join these together, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, is we're gonna be using a two inch uniseal. Now the two inch uniseal, when I use that term, uh, again, links are in the description for all these products. That refers to the inside diameter, that inside space there. So you're going to use a two inch uniseal. It's going to use a two inch pipe, PVC pipe. Uh, now that's not the outside edge that you're going to be tracing. So what I did is I traced around, there's a, a little lip on the inside of this uniseal. I used a Sharpie to trace around in a circle to get the template for where I need to cut. Now I should have used this hole saw when I originally did it. This is the hole that, this is actually the old uh, rain barrel that I took off the old trash can. I, the right, I've got the right size linked in the description here, but this is the right tool to use here. If you notice, I thought I was cutting it really good by hand. There's a lot of play. So when you start getting, you have to get very accurate when you talk about using these uniseals because that's what keeps the water from leaking out. It's the pressure of that uniseal pushing out against it. Now that uniseal is perfectly round and it needs to have a tight fit into the barrel. You can see that I made a mistake here and that's why it didn't work. This is a two inch uniseal. So from here on out, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it the right way. This is a two inch uniseal in the inside. So you can see how big that is. And it's closer to about three and a quarter, three and three quarters, to four inches on the outside. And then the hole saw is a three inch hole saw. And you can see that's why we're using that here. That's what that inside diameter is gonna need is a three inch hole saw. It's gonna be slightly smaller, which we want a really snug fit, which is perfect. Now it's a great time to remind you, please subscribe to our channel. If you're enjoying this content, if you're learning something, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. It really does help our channel grow and helps us make more of these videos. One of the really convenient things about using these trash cans is that they're all symmetrical. So if you've got a line here that you can use to measure off of, and then the brute name at the bottom is also evenly spaced, so you can use that U for your middle mark as well. So you can kind of eyeball it a little bit and make sure that you're drilling in the same place so that all of your holes line up. Now I'm using a Sharpie Pro here. I really like this one because it'll you can use on plastic services. You can even use on greasy services, that kind of stuff. It actually works really well. I've got a red one and a, and a black one, but uh, I'm using that here to mark around. And so I've sped up the video again here to just make this a little easier to see. Now that we've got our hole marked, we're gonna actually use our hole saw. We're gonna drill our hole into our barrel. Now we're gonna work it around and just try to get it generally lined up. It's not gonna be perfect uh, because when you're marking around this, you know, there's a little bit of you know, error to how you're marking around the, the uniseal. Now you may have some of this microplastic from the drilling process. 
What I did afterward is I just went around and took a shop vac and vacuumed it right up. It was laying right on top of the grass, so I was able to pick it right up. No worries. But I would encourage you to think about either doing this inside or possibly using a shop vac or something so that the plastic doesn't get all in your, your grass and in your yard. Now, this hole wasn't exact, but you can go around afterwards if you want to use an X-Acto knife or a burring tool if you have one to clean around the inside. I just used my finger and kind of picked off some of the plastic that was sticking out. You do want this to be a pretty clean hole so that makes a very good seal when you put the Unisil in. So stuff like this, this piece of plastic that's, that's sticking out and I was able to pull off, that can make a bad seal. So you want to get the kind of stuff off on the inside. Now there's some remnants on here of some of the, uh, I used some silicone to try to seal it when I made my mistake last time. That absolutely did not work. If you have new Uniseals, you probably won't have any problems. But since I was reusing a Uniseal here, I wanted to make sure that it was very clean and I wanted to make sure the inside cut from the hole saw was clean. Because it needs to be really tight when it goes in. That pressure of the Uniseal pushing out against the wall is what seals the pipe in and seals the unisealing. So we're gonna clean off some of the remnants here. I would suggest doing this on your own uniseal anyway. Just run your finger around, even if it's brand new out of the package, clean it off, use a little bit of alcohol if there's any resin or anything left on it. Uh, but I'll tell you, that is the most critical part of this build. The part on the outside here makes the seal and there's a lip right here that makes a seal as well. We'd love to have a thicker piece of plastic. That's the one downfall of using this. It'll work fine, but optimally you'd want a thicker piece of plastic that you're inserting the Uniseal into so that it has more to seal against. And there you go. You can see that it makes a very tight fit now. It's clicking in. And I just go around and kind of pushed around on the inside. Uh, and, and that's it. Uh, we're kind of going around, we're going to work it just to make sure that the seal is fully up against the wall on the outside, so that as much of that is sticking in as possible. And that's it. Now we've got our Uniseal in the barrel itself. And you can see kind of on the inside how it's going to look. It's nice and clean on the inside. Uh, you can see that piece is sticking in quite a bit, and that's what we want, right? We want that fully in so that there's no gap there. Now I have capped this pipe on the inside of the second barrel here. If you're ever doing repairs, you want to make sure that you cap on the inside of the barrel preceding where you need to make the repairs because the weight of the water will actually push the cap on and make a watertight seal. We're going to use some dish detergent. You can use palm olive or Dawn or whatever you have handy. Uh, but we're going to coat the outside of this pipe. The Uniseal is very tight against this two inch pipe in order to make a watertight seal. We don't want any type of chemicals. We don't want petroleum jelly or anything that you might think you'd want to use to, to kind of lubricate this. That all sticks around too long and it will make it so that the seal leaks. The dish detergent works really well because it dissipates quickly and it doesn't leave any chemical residue that you need to worry about with your plants or anything. Now, I probably wouldn't have done this if I had two hands free, if I'd had a tripod, but uh, you could just use a small amount of dish detergent I also rounded off the outside edge of this pipe just to make it a little bit easier to, to fit into the Uniseal. Now it's nice if you have a little help here because it's difficult. In my case, I was trying to film too, but this is actually not that easy trying to put this barrel on and hold the pipe at the same time. So if you can have somebody holding the pipe and then another person pushing the, the barrel on, this makes it a, a lot simpler process. Now I was able to get this one on uh, but I'm going to show you here, that's where the, the Uniseal kind of comes in. You can see how much we've got on the inside. It's not quite as much as I'd want, so uh, we'll probably do a little bit of adjustment here and, and push it in just a little bit further because I'd like to be able to, you know, have enough sticking in there so that I don't have to worry about leaks or it kind of working itself loose or anything. Maybe an inch or two on the inside I think is, is usually plenty. You do want to have a gap at the top though, so make sure you leave yourself enough of a gap here to get your tops on and off uh, easily. So there you go. There's about two inches there on the inside, which is perfect. It's exactly what we needed. Now the next thing is we're going to test for leaks, which is kind of an all or nothing thing. I'm going to take the cap off of the second barrel, and here you can see that uh, the water has kind of equalized in both barrels, a little bit of soap suds there. 
if I took the top off the third barrel or the first barrel, however you want to say it, you would see that all three of them have equalized very quickly. And there's the two inch cap that I had that was pushed on uh, on the inside of that second barrel. Looking down at it, I probably would have wanted a little bit more of that pipe sticking out. I may have even pulled a little bit out of it when I was working it around to try to push that third one on. But now we've got it set up, we can put our tops on it and we're going to check for leaks. Well, the boards are dry underneath which is a really good sign. No leaks coming out. You'll see a dribble, uh, and, and again, I can speak from experience, a little bit of soap that I got off of there, but there's no water coming out. You'll see a little dribble either coming, usually coming around from the outside of the uniseal if you didn't make a good cut or if you didn't use a hole saw in my case. So that's it guys. That's about 132 gallons of fresh rainwater that we can use in our garden. We are gonna add some additional features, so Check out one of our next upcoming videos. We're going to add a sediment filter here. That's going to help us. Obviously, you saw some of that sediment earlier in the bottom of it from the roof as, as it rains. It just naturally gets and collects in there. It's got a decent amount of pressure as it stands today, but we want to put that sediment filter on there because then we're going to add a pump as part of our garden is uphill. And this was really the only place that we had a downspout in a reasonably level flat area so that the water could kind of come down here so we had to pick this place and so we're gonna to have to pump uphill so we're gonna use this extra space down here at the end to add a pump and we need that sediment filter and then we're gonna add a solar panel and a battery as well and that'll give us good pressure to be able to use a sprayer as well we hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have check out some of these others and join us next time on the purpose-driven homestead <laughs>